Hey guys, Matt here today, getting back into 1 Thessalonians 2. Today will be our last video in 1 Thessalonians 2. And Paul ends chapter 2, he ends his, his big defense, his big case, his, his apology, meaning uh, apologetics, not, not I'm sorry, but he, he pleads this case to these guys. He tells them, hey, remember, I was chosen by God. I was entrusted with the gospel. He, he, he reminds them how he acted when he was there, right? He didn't ask for anything, although he could have. Right? He, he was blameless and holy. And now, today, he reminds them that, Hey guys, I didn't leave willingly. Let's, let's uh, pick up here in verse 17. He says, But since we were torn away from you. That doesn't sound very pleasant, does it? Doesn't sound very voluntary. But since we were torn away from you, brothers, for a short time, in person, not in heart, we endeavor the more eagerly and with great desire to see you face to face. Because we wanted to come to you, I, Paul, again and again, but Satan hindered us. Isn't that interesting? We're going to talk about that. Satan, God allowed Satan to hinder him. Verse 19, For what is our hope, or joy, or crown of boasting before our Lord Jesus Christ that is coming? Is it not you? For you are our glory and joy. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a cold. Okay, so... Paul reminds them a very important thing here. He says, guys, remember I was torn away. Because, of course, we, we already talked about this, but the, the snake oil salesmen, the false teachers, are, are whispering in their ears, right? They're, Where's your Paul now? Where is he? Why isn't he coming back? Hey, why did he leave in the first place? So Paul reminds them, hey, guys, I came from Philippi, had wounds on my back, and I, I gave you guys the gospel. You accepted it as God's word, right? It didn't just come in, in word only, but in power. It changed your life. And then as soon as you got it, I was chased out of town. I was torn away, right? So Paul was torn away. And you notice he says, in person, but not in heart. This is powerful. If you read Paul's writings, it doesn't take you very long. Although it is God's word, we can still pick up on Paul's heart. In fact, in chapter 3, Paul says, uh, twice he says, when we, we, we could bear it no longer. And then he goes on in verse, I think it's verse 8, he says, and now we live. So next chapter, Paul gets the good news. He gets Timothy's report, and things are going pretty good. And you can just pick up on the fact that Paul, he's just beside himself. He doesn't know what's happening in the church of Thessalonica. He doesn't know what, are these false teachers tearing it apart? Is Satan getting his way? So that's how Paul is there, not only in person, but in heart. Paul is everywhere Paul goes, he leaves a bit of himself. We saw in, in verse 8, we didn't just give you the gospel, but our own selves. That's what Paul says. Everywhere Paul goes, he leaves his heart, a piece of him anyways. So Paul was there in, in, in uh, not only, he wasn't there in person, but he was there in heart. And then he goes on and he says, hey guys, and by the way, not only was I torn away, but I wanted to come. I wanted to see you. But check this out, but Satan hindered me. Isn't that interesting? Satan, why would God allow Satan to hinder Paul? Well, there's, I think we talked about this in the, in the introduction, but there's a lot of reasons I think Paul, uh, God would do this to Paul, right? God won't share his glory with anybody, so he didn't want the Thessalonians relying on Paul. He didn't want there to be a hint of idolatry, right? And that's a good word for us to today. For today, we, we have our favorite teachers, but we better not be worshiping any of them, you know. We better not be idol idolizing any of them, no. And God didn't want that with Paul either. In fact, that's why probably he held Paul back, right? He wanted the, the Thessalonians to rely on him and him alone, and he pulled through. He didn't leave them. He will never leave you or forsake you, Thessalonians, and it's the same for us today, right? So, so Satan was allowed to hinder Paul. In fact, Satan is allowed to hinder us sometimes, right? I think it was Luther who said, Satan, uh, he, well, he's God's devil, but he's on a leash, right? I mean, God created him. God's much more powerful than the devil. Yes, he's a formidable foe, but he is on a leash. After all, God can control him, and he can make him do anything he wants. Uh, I think I heard, I think it was Paul Washer, maybe. I think it was Paul Washer. <clears throat> he told a story and I'm sure he was repeating it from somebody that he heard it from, but there was an old preacher, I think it was in England, and he was wondering what to preach on. So he was walking through the town, the old town square, and he came across a blacksmith, this big hulking man with massive muscles, uh, and he's pounding away at the steel. 
And next to him was this well-refined, smaller man, well-dressed, well-mannered, well-refined, and he was kind of ordering this big, hulking blacksmith. And this caught the pastor's mind, the preacher's, it caught his attention, and he walked up and he, he said to the well-refined man in the suit, he said, pardon me, sir, why are you telling the blacksmith what to do? Why are you pointing and giving him orders? And the well-refined, smaller, well-dressed man said, oh, him? Oh, no, he's not the blacksmith. I'm the blacksmith. He's an idiot. He's just a big bloke. He's just a big block of muscles. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's an imbecile. I tell him what to do. I tell him where to hit and where not to hit. And I think that's a good analogy of how God allows Satan to hinder us and, and how God was allowing Satan to hinder Paul. It's for God's glory and it's, it's to grow our faith. Satan can bang away at us and sometimes we wonder, God, why are you doing this? Well, we don't see the end result. It's always for God's glory and our good. And that's what was happening with Paul. He was being hindered by Satan, but it was for the Thessalonians' good, it was for Paul's good, and it was for God's glory. And that's what God always does, because God is always good. God never does anything that is not good. Amen? All right. And then Paul finishes up in verse 19. He says, For what is our hope or joy or crown of boasting before our Lord Jesus Christ that is coming? Is it not you? For you are our glory and joy. And I, I love when I hear this. Paul says this kind of, he, he mentions this theme repeatedly. I think we heard it in Colossians too. We, that we, we may present you perfect before the Lord. I'm paraphrasing. And this is really a picture of, of the second coming, right? And Paul's going to, it's kind of like Paul's the general. And, and everyone there in Thessalonica, they're the troops. And he wants to polish them up and he wants to get them in, in line and in order and, and help them uh, walk in a manner worthy of God. So he can say, here they are, Lord. How did I do? How did I do with the talents you gave me? And then he'll hear from Jesus, well done, good and faithful servant. And that's a good example for us. All right. So we stop, we finish 1 Thessalonians 2, and tomorrow we will pick up on 1 Thessalonians 3. Peace.